Well, the last video showed you how to design a financial system using Minsky's unique um, double entry bookkeeping way of producing equations to describe a financial system. What I want to now do is show you what would it look like if you tried to do that in a standard model. I'm going to cheat here because one thing you can do with Minsky is to see what the equations actually are behind the system by outputting them to what's known as latex for those who don't know their mathematical um, typesetting programs. Latex is the way of typesetting mathematical equations. But I choose that and give this a name as I've given up all here already, MinskyBank.tex. Uh, I'll just, I won't save it because I've already saved it here once before. But what you then get is that the equations behind the system. And there's consumption defined as the amount of money in the safe divided by the uh, time constant for bankers' consumption ditto for workers, interest being the rate of interest on, on loans times the amount of money outstanding loans at any point of time. And here are the flow equations for the amount of money in the firms, loans, safe, and workers' accounts. So I'm going to use that and cheat uh, and use that to design the same model in BizSim and just see how long it takes me and what it looks like. Now, well, I can understand it. So I'll drag that to one side, flip over to BizSim, which is my favorite of the existing programs, as I've said several times before. Well, let's now just use what I've got as my crib sheet over here to design the model as rapidly as I can. So BizSim, uh, as does Minsky, supports the idea of having variables for passing um, arguments at one point or another rather than just having to use wires as in some of the other programs. So I'm going to name this variable um, safe. This one I'll make loans. Let's drag safe down a bit. Another one firms and another one workers. There, what I want to define is the overall flows. Again, they've got uh, obvious copying and pasting things we haven't yet implemented in Minsky. You've got to do everything one step at a time. With us, we're still working on the grouping to get the uh, Mac uh, copying uh, done properly. That, that'll come in the next few weeks, I hope. Okay, that's uh, the accounts we wish to define. They're all flow accounts, so you need to have a integral block feeding into them. And for those who know their um, uh, mathematics, you know why 1 over s is the symbol which is used as a little Laplace transform to, uh, for the, the mathematics of actually gen generating a, a way of solving these differential equations and simulating numerically. And I had to have additional conditions as well. I know the initial loan was 100. The way that I prefer to do this in BizSim is to add in a summation block. And I'll just have to bring the blocks down here. Arithmetic and a summing junction. And I then add what's coming out of the integral block to the initial conditions. If I wire that up for um, loans in the initial case, that's saying whatever's flowing in through here is added to the initial amount, and I'm going to make that initial amount 100, so I'll bring down a constant as well. Ah, down here, producer, constant, make that 100. Now, I've got to make sure I use the same thing in two locations here, so I've got to put that into a, a variable, and I'll call that uh, init loan. So I can now attach that as an initial condition to the amount of money in the firm's account as well. So there we have the beginning of the definition for loans. Let's add the other integral blocks for firms, and I can just, of course, as you can do in Minsky, I can just copy that and paste it a few times. Now, I need the same sort of thing, initial loan and a summation block for the amount of money in firms' accounts. This is why it starts to get complicated trying to design a financial system using these programs because you have to do all the operations twice without knowing they're actually coordinated. By program forcing you to coordinate as you do them. An initial loan there. Now, there's no money in the uh, worker's account the way I've modeled it, and nor is there anything in the safe. So I can ignore initial conditions. They're both default conditions of zero inside these um, integral blocks here. So I've got that defined. 
Now I need to define what the flows are. And again, I'll just use the fact that biz, biz sim lets you use names to pass values rather than having to wire everything up. Wires would just be unbelievably messy here. Okay, so I need to have consumption by one of the variable I need to going to be, okay, with that, this one is consumption by bankers. Consumption by workers. Uh, interest. Lending and wages. So those are my five variables that I now need to feed into these accounts to uh, define everything. Let's start with I had lending at the top, then I had interest, then wages, and consumption by workers and consumption by bankers. Let's use the same here. And I now need to find lending is the rate of interest on loans times loans. So I need the constant uh, and just annotation. I've got a constant. Okay, I'll just use a straight constant there. So again, take a copy of that one, bring it down here. And let's say the rate of interest on loans is 0 0.05 as before. So uh, rate of interest. So that multiplied by the amount of money in loans. So take a copy of that and paste that down here. So 0 0.05 times, and I need a multiply block. I haven't got the block showing this, so I can change the view. Uh, I'll go this way. Okay, so multiply block. So I then say 0 0.05 multiplied by loans is the amount of interest being paid. And then lending, I've got the exponential growth of lending. That's loans, so that's a copy of that. And a copy of the multiply block. Multiplied by the G of L, which, okay. Again, I'll use a constant of that. I made that 10%, so we need another constant. I'll just grab this one. Make that 0.1. wire all that up. There's a the growth of loans. Now wages are W, which I had as 3, so another constant needed. Multiplied by the amount of money in the firm's account, so a copy of that. Another multiply block. And then consumption by bankers, I use a time constant for those two, so I'll bring down a divide by block here. So consumption by workers, the amount of money in the workers account. Ah, pardon me, wrong block. Okay, arithmetic, divide by. All right. Okay, amount of money in the workers account. Ah. Divided by and I had, again, another constant on there. I made that uh, 0 0.02 or 0 0.04, pardon me, not 0 0.04. Okay, and then same sort of thing for the banks. So I need to have the amount of money in the safe. divided by their time constant, which happened to be 1. So that's defined the elements in the system. Now I need to whack them all into the integral blocks over here. So I'm going to have a range of summing, uh, summing junctions and so on. So I'll just take a copy of that summing junction and whack that there, 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 and there, and just wire them up to get ready.
Now, the interest on loans, that's, that's, okay. So lending is just loans, not the growth of loans. I can actually forget about that summation, so copy that. Make it up here. Delete that, so lending integrated is the amount of loans. Okay. Then I have the amount of money going to the firm. Now that's complicated, because that, the sign is automatically modified by the program to produce the, uh, the system state, so it's um, not the same sign as you see in the table itself. But I'll need to have a lending uh, and consumption by workers and consumption by bankers. They're all added together. And then I've got minus wages and minus interest. Let's copy those two. Okay, so what I need to do is add additional elements to the summing junction here. So I've now got those five elements, and these two down the bottom are both negative. I change the sign, and then that's plus lending, plus consumption by workers, plus consumption by bankers. Whoops. Minus interest, minus wages. I hope you can see how much I'm concentrating to make sure I got all this wired up correctly. Nowhere near as hard to do this in Minsky. That's the whole point of going through this exercise. God knows how they're going to watch the whole bloody thing. What I'll do at the end, I hope, is uh, show how to modify, and I'll do it in the next video, show how to modify this versus modifying um, a godly table in Minsky to add a bit more realism to it. So there's our firm sector. Now workers are getting wages in, and their consumption is going out, and bankers have got interest coming in, and their consumption going out. Now, of course, one point is, I could easily forget in wiring this up to make the signs the correct way around. This program won't stop me doing that and give me no warning that I've got it wrong. Of course, I've got to make that minus consumption there and minus consumption there. That should be the whole system. So let's bring a graph down. And I'll just graph up to the two essential ones to see what's whether this is working properly, which is the two system states, loans and the actual deposit amount of money in the firm's account. And uh, let's uh, simulate it. Yep, looks like it's working okay. Okay, so I've done that. Now, I got there that quickly because I already had this done over here. So, and I know that I, when I tried to do these things rapidly beforehand, I just gave up with the complexity of it all. But I'll stop there and I'll then compare that to adding a bit of a traditional detail in Minsky.